So I know many of you guys have been seeing a lot of reports out there about big investment firms going into special servicing with some of their portfolios. So I thought we'd talk about that today. What are the next steps after they go into special servicing? So, um, George, I know that you've been watching this. Mm -hmm. I know you've seen, a, what was it, Blackstone gave back a, a portfolio. So yeah, special there's servicing. Quite, quite a few companies, Downtown actually. LA, so, a couple mm -hmm. owners. Um, you know, going into special servicing, they make it sound so terrible in all the articles, right? But it's really not that bad. It's just the beginning of a process. And I think we should walk through with, um, for everybody, the process. Sure. You know, after you know, you go into special servicing, where do you go from there? Mm -hmm. Well, when when a property goes into special servicing, essentially the the general service that comes in is you know once a year you may have some financial reporting to the lender, things like that regarding the property as well as the guarantor strength. Um, but when it comes to special servicing, the servicing now goes to a third party or a different company usually. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is CMBS loans typically have different tranches. Yep. So, and those tranches get to bid on who the servicer is and who the special servicer is. Mm -hmm. So a special servicer just means that the property's been placed into default. And that default could be both monetary as well as legal, meaning right. maybe they're the borrower did not supply any of the financial information and they refused to. You could be put in default for that. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's a uh, interesting... Well, it's a negotiation. It, it's a first it, step it's in a negotiation. negotiation. So a lot of times, mm -hmm. by the time you go into special servicing, they're already negotiation, negotiating next steps. Yeah. And so um, I think that's, uh, you know, what are the next steps? Uh, yeah. Forbearance is one. Well, yeah, it's the options, you know, because yeah. the, the idea is that both the special servicer and the borrower, they don't want to foreclose, right? Right. Um, the last thing a bank wants to do is take back a property, and the last thing that a investor wants to do is have the bank take oh, back the give property. Give it back, yeah. So, you know, forbearance is a short-term fix. I mean, you hear that quite a bit. I wouldn't necessarily ask unless you can really explain why you need a forbearance, um, which is basically the lender deferring your mortgage payments for a period of time, anywhere from three months to a year, mm -hmm. and then they just tack it on at the end of the term. Right. So they extend the term, but you're not paying the, the payments here. Interest may and probably will still accrue during that time frame, sure. so your balance may go up. But at the same time, you won't have to make payments. Only look at forbearance if there's a, a real valid reason for a short-term fix. You know, maybe something happened in the immediate area where there's an emergency and or high, super high vacancies. You mm -hmm. know, um, take a look at all that. I mean, the last time forbearance was very, re extremely popular was, of course, during COVID. And, yeah. You know, when people couldn't afford to pay rent. Sure. So, look at that. The next step, though, is then talking about possibly a repayment plan. Working mm -hmm. with the special servicer. How can we get caught up? What are we going to do? Is there anything that you can waive? Important question to ask. Or Again, say no. But it's a communication. But it's a communication and negotiation. Remember. Yeah, you can you can negotiate it. So mm -hmm. you can blend and extend like that. Say. Absolutely. So go ahead. Yeah. Blend, blend and extend. Absolutely. Like the uh, well loan modification. Mm -hmm. you know, also known as. So a lot of people don't realize that a you can always approach a lender and ask them to modify that loan. You know, to yep. current rates, to current time frames, current interest, um, current terms. You know, so meaning if you maybe you only have two years remaining on your term and it was a 10 year term, well, you've paid down a lot of that principal. So mm -hmm. even if you refinance at a higher interest rate, the amount that you're refinancing to put in a new loan yep. in place is a lower amount. So as such, your payments may be lower, if not. Uh, or, or the same, even if the mm -hmm. interest rates are higher, yeah. you know, two or three percent. So look at loan modifications. It can really help you get out of a jam, and it's more of a medium-term fix. Right. Long-term fix, of course, is refi. Yeah. You know, just go in and refinance the property it's if you harder, can. Yeah. You know, and and realistically, if you're going to refinance um, the property, you want to make sure that the property can actually. Support it. Support it. So you know, I'm a firm believer in not over leveraging. You know, a lot of people like to over uh, like to maximize their leverage because mm -hmm. it compounds the rate of return based upon appreciation. I'm looking at cash flow mixed with appreciation, so I'm willing to take a little bit less risk sure. and not and have the surety that I can almost always refinance anytime I want because right. I'm doing a lower loan to value. Um, the other two last two options really are. 
maybe you have a buyer that wants to purchase the property and but it's not quite enough to cover the full mortgage right so you can short do what a short sale yeah so cover the balance a short sale will cover your cover the balance but the the lender then can you know it agrees to um take less than what they are expecting or mm -hmm. to have on the property remember however a lot of the commercial loans have personal guarantees so the lender may not be as motivated to do that mm -hmm. okay yep. but at the same time they're going to also expect everybody to take a haircut that includes your brokers that includes all the vendors your escrow company the lender has to take a little bit off of what they're expecting then they're going to expect everybody else to do that as well so it may not necessarily work out because you have a lot of moving parts in a short sale you have right. a lot more third parties involved lastly though is deed and lieu okay yeah a tough one so deed and lieu is short for deed and lieu of foreclosure right and uh, essentially what it is is you're really giving the keys back to the lender uh, the property and walking away from it yeah. in exchange for them not filing formal foreclosure proceedings against you which can affect your future investment mm -hmm. so you know a lot of times investors are willing to do that walk away from the equity that they may have if it's not that much yep. and then just turn it over to the bank and say you know here's your deed in lieu yeah and it won't be a negative black mark on their credit reports down the road though yeah yeah it sometimes can be the best way just to move mm -hmm. on from it yeah. you know and the banks like i said you want to have a conversation with them you want to you see you know everybody wants the best outcome and sometimes a deed in lieu is mm -hmm. something you end up doing but well george thank you very much for this i thought it was very important and we really walked you through this because we're starting to see a lot of it uh, actually, not a lot of it. I shouldn't say that. So I'm scaring everybody. We're seeing a lot in the news. Yeah, it's I been think. in the news lately. And so, you know, it doesn't mean that everything is going to hell in a handbasket. They're they're working things out. So, uh, but, all right. Well, George, thank you very much. I'm going to put okay. George's contact information down below in the video. So if you want to reach out to him, feel free. And uh, make sure you give us a like. And if you haven't done so, make sure you subscribe.